So we are back in the games room and yes, it's time for another pickups video for Games from Japan. And this time I thought I'd do something a little bit different because I got quite a few pickups in August. So I thought I will split it up into two videos so I don't overwhelm you with too much stuff, too much tat. So I'll start off with the PlayStation game. So it will be PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. And then in a couple of weeks time, I will put out a video for the Saturn. And of course, I did pick up some PC Engine games too. So let's take a look at uh, the lovely stack of games on the table there. And uh, let's look at the PlayStation games I picked up from Japan. So let's start off with the PlayStation 1 and let's start off with the Shooter 2, a game that most people are very familiar with already, it is Raiden Project. So this is not a Japanese exclusive, it did come out in all regions, in fact I think it was probably a release title for both PAL and North America, if it wasn't it was definitely a very very early release. Normally if a game is released outside of Japan I do tend to go for the North American version but in this case, it really didn't make sense. Uh, the North American version is a hell of a lot more expensive. The Japanese version is a fraction of the price. And also the Power One 2 is kind of pricey these days. So I thought I'd save a little bit of money and go for the Japanese version. And let's face it, it's just a port of Raiden 1 and 2. So, you know, there's no language involved here. And to be honest with you, I feel the cover art as well is a hell of a lot better on the Japanese version, especially compared to the North American one. I do own both the PCBs for these games and I had a quick play to do a comparison and it's by no means perfect but it's a pretty damn good port of the games. They have done a really good job and it's a really nice touch that you've got both Raiden 1 and 2 in the set. So it's a fantastic way to play these games and plus if you get the Japanese version it's really cheap. Sticking with Raiden we have got Raiden DX. Unlike Project, this is a Japanese exclusive and I got a feeling this is the only home console port of the game so unless you've got the arcade game I've got a feeling this is the only way really to play this one and it is basically a sort of conversion of Raiden 2 it's using the same graphics and basically the same layout but they have tweaked the gameplay done some slight changes to the scoring enough to make you feel like it is a different game you get to choose between novice uh, training and expert, with novice being the game that's more like the original Raiden 2, and the expert seems to have a little bit of added features to an extra enemies. I do like the changes on the uh, medals, which change colors. So the faster you get it, the, uh, the more points you get. Nice little feature. In with shooters, we have got volume 35 in the simple series, the shooting. I didn't know too much about this one, it's just a bit of a gamble since it's part of the Simple series. I don't use a shooting game for this name, uh, but I believe this is not an exclusive. It did get released in North America at least as Space Shot. I have no idea what the Western version is like, but the Japanese version it has got some horrendous cutscenes at the beginning that you have to somehow get through. But then after that, the gameplay is not too bad once you get used to it. I was quite pleasantly surprised by this one, it plays quite well and the graphics are pretty decent and I do like the mechanics of it uh, with the way you can sort of spread your shot out and you can use some sort of homing missiles as well but uh, like most of these simple series it does feel a little bit uh, unfinished, a little bit uh, unpolished. Once you get to the boss battles it does get a little bit confusing, you can't really tell what's going out, there's too much explosions yeah, it uh, gets a bit of a mess, but still a lot of fun and a uh, cheap one too. Next up is number 73 in the Simple Series, The Invaders. And yes, it says exactly what it is on the tin, it's basically Space Invaders. 
This is a nice little Space Invaders collection by Tato. They're all in there. I love the way they put the little tabletop there to show you the different games that they had and the dedicated cap, of course. Of course, my favorite is there, the classic uh, version of Space Invaders with the reproduced moon mirrored image there. Uh, but like a lot of these simple series, they have added a little bit of a bonus. So one game I've never seen before is this 3D Space Invaders, which I really enjoyed. It was a bit of a novelty to try it out and uh, it was fun for about five minutes. It didn't last too long, but definitely if you're a big Space Invaders fan, you probably want to look out for this collection. Next up is Simple Series Volume 56, The Sniper. Now this one actually did trick me with the name. Yes, I knew it was going to be about sniping, but I thought it would be using the gun. It's not, it's using the controller. This is all about presentation over gameplay. You've got some fantastic cutscenes and introductions to each level, but it does feel like the game developer is just advertising uh, to other developers to, to buy them up and just a bit of a tech demo really. Gameplay wise, it's very simple. You're basically given a mark at the beginning of each episode and you just scan the environment looking to where they are. Maybe they're sitting in a restaurant or walking down the street. Yep, and you just take them out. And uh, then you're back to some more cutscenes and some more jazz music. Nice. Next is Simple Series Volume 94, The Cameraman. Now this one, I was kind of shocked to see this on the PlayStation 1. It's uh, basically a re-release of Gekibo, Gekisha Boy, that was on the PC Engine, that was published by RM. I'm a big fan of the PC Engine version of this game. It's a lot of fun. It's a weird, quirky little game. Uh, the idea is to sort of guide your photographer uh, around this town. He's got an assignment to take a picture of certain things. And in this town, a lot of weird things are happening and the weirder the event that you capture the sort of more money you get and you also get additional camera film and if you hit like balls and skateboards you'll lose your film if you've got no more film it's game over the really cool thing about the playstation version is that it is also co-op so you've got uh, gagisha girl to help you out really really good game very recommended I was even more shocked to find out that there was a sequel on the PlayStation 2. It is Gekibo 2. It's very cool that Aram actually put out a sequel for this one. And uh, as you expect, it's pretty much the same as the first game. But of course, you've got much better graphics and a lot more crazy, wacky things are going on. They didn't really have to change much to this game. They did have a sort of additional sort of zoom feature to it, so you can sort of focus in a little bit into the background, which is a cool feature. I'm just glad that they didn't go all 3D on this game. They didn't need to. Don't know if I got lucky with this one, but it wasn't expensive at all in Japan. But on eBay, ridiculous money. So try and get it from Japan if you can. Next up is another sequel that I had no idea existed on the PlayStation 2. It is Twinkle Star Sprites, La Petite Princess. If you ever watch my arcade pickups, then you know how much I love the original version of this game on the Neo Geo MVS. It was one of my holy grails and uh, I was super excited to pick up the original MVS car of this one. So when I saw on Yahoo Auction that there was a sequel to this game, yeah, I was pretty excited about it and I was absolutely stoked to get this one. But unfortunately, there's nothing much new about this game that wasn't already done in the first game. Yes, they have updated the graphics, but uh, to be honest with you, I probably prefer the original one. There's additional characters, and uh, that's pretty much it. There's nothing much new in this game that would get you too excited. They did add online play to the game, which would have been quite cool back in the day, but that's long gone now. And they did have a little hidden extra feature to it. I believe you can unlock the original game. But end of the day, it's uh, nothing new. But I do love the series, so I am really happy to get the game. More arcade goodness with Contra. Hamster did a cool arcade series of uh, basically emulation of the ROMs on the PlayStation 2. And when I saw Contra was there, I had to grab it. It's one of my favorites. It's a nice little set, you've got some additional bonuses in there and nice little cards as well, which is very cool to have. At first I was absolutely disgusted by the horizontal mode that they set it to, but eventually I did work out how to set it to vertical, just like the original arcade. As you can see, it makes a huge, huge difference. 
Okay, it's just emulation of the ROM, so basically it's only for really collectors of Contra. Of course, when I saw they had Haunted Castle as well, I had to grab it. I've never actually played the arcade version of this, so I was pretty excited to actually check it out. But uh, I've got to say, it's, uh, it's nothing compared to the Castlevania home games. As like with Contra, you get the cool extra goodies with it. So you get the card and also the soundtrack and some sort of promotion material as well, which is quite cool. Again, this is just pure emanation. It's basically just a ROM on the PlayStation 2. Even the load up screen is there of the game booting up the, like the original PCB. So there's nothing new here that you can't already play on main. But if you're a Castlevania fan like me, then uh, this is a really cool game to pick up. So yeah, definitely just for the collectors. So enough of the collectors nonsense, let's have a proper game. Let's have Chain Dive. I don't know if this game is rare or just so high in demand, but I really struggled to actually find this one. And when it eventually appeared in stock in Surigaya, I grabbed it. I think I saw this one years ago on someone's pickups video. I can't remember who it was, but uh, I remember being blown away by the gameplay. But I've got to say, I am not disappointed at all. It plays much better than I could imagine. The cutscenes and graphics and backgrounds are just outstanding. It visually is an absolute treat. Like I said before, it's all about the gameplay. It is so much fun to play. It's a little bit confusing at first to get used to the mechanics of the way of using this plasma uh, grappling hook. You know, it feels a little bit like Bionic Commando or something. And the way that you sort of freeze and take out the enemies as well, you have to get used to it. But once you do, it just feels so natural. Apparently they did have some sort of association with Platinum Games. I think they maybe joined them or they uh, helped them out on the Bayonetta games. So you definitely get that sort of sense, that silky smooth action from Bayonetta. You do feel it in this game. So if you like Platinum Games, then you will love this game. So there you have it. You've made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. I've got to say, Chain Dive, really, really good game. But uh, I will be putting out another video. It uh, will be the PC Engine games and the Saturn games. And uh, I'll be thanking you again. And uh, I'll see you later.